Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to spend 15 minutes talking a little bit about some of the newer uh, development uh, aspects that Cryoport is working on uh, from a process standpoint to support this space. If I can figure out how to use the... Okay. Uh, so we are public, so here's our safe harbor. Obviously, uh, you know, if you're interested in looking at this, take a look at our public filings. So Cryoport is an entity itself. Uh, obviously, we are the largest and most complete cold chain um, logistics uh, supplier in the space itself. Uh, we really focus on providing the uh, ability for our client base to uh, move their products, uh, both clinical and commercial, from uh, clinical sites to manufacturing and manufacturing back out to uh, clinic for dosing. And we really, uh, we, we've built a platform that's unique in this space. And um, it's allowed us in a four-year period to develop a portfolio where we're supporting over 357 clinical trials, four commercial products, 46 phase three programs. And uh, we, we anticipate multiple additional filings in this year uh, uh, on that portfolio that we're supporting on a global basis. And the reason that folks come to us is that we provide the most uh, most uh, complete solution when it comes to product, drug substance, drug product distribution, uh, which includes packaging, logistics, and informatics, all integrated in a comprehensive platform and anchored by the most complete and rigorous processes in the space. So this shows you kind of the evolution of the portfolio that we're supporting. Uh, as I mentioned, 357 uh, clinical programs, both the Novartis and Kite commercial launches on a global basis. And this has given us a very large reservoir of experience uh, to draw from, uh, both in the autologous and the allogeneic fronts, as well as the ability to build out the infrastructure uh, to support, you know, the activity in the space. And uh, this is both from an equipment standpoint, uh, facilities, informatics, and other platform areas. So let's talk a little bit about some of the developmental areas that we've been working on in addition to our core platform. So one of the things that we've spent a lot of time on, and this is in direct response to what we're seeing in the marketplace, in particular uh, elements that came out of both the Kite and Novartis commercial launches. And that was that um, from a regulatory standpoint, uh, there was a need for enhanced uh, traceability, enhanced control, and enhanced uh, compliance on the logistics space. So one of the things we did is we, we took a step back and we built out a, a compliance platform that, similar to what you would see in a biologics or, or API manufacturing space, gives us full traceability on the equipment, the processes, uh, and every element that ties into uh, any aspect of the distribution in, in, in a capturable and measurable uh, format. Um, so we, we call it traceability equipment and processes supporting a client uh, therapy. So this gives you a little bit of understanding behind what that traceability is. And the traceability is important because what it does is it, it gives you a platform, uh, a data intensive platform that you can integrate back into your core systems. Uh, this platform is, is operated on what we call our cryo portal informatics platform. And it supports not only capture on all the performance characteristics around the, the, the equipment itself, but also around the performance of that equipment in the field through our third-party carrier relationships. Uh, and it also provides the ability uh, to capture all of the calibration and other uh, informatics-based uh, components that relate to uh, the performance, the calibration history, uh, commodity history and, and, and other uh, relevant areas around the equipment itself or the processes or the partners. Um, and, th and this has been very, very well received in the market. So the, the importance of traceability, and, and this is just used as an example to give you an understanding of why this is important. If you look at a historical validation of a piece of equipment, what they'll do is they'll usually validate it against a static standard uh, so they may have a, all right, we want to validate a given piece of equipment for, you know, 
let's say, an 18-day hold time, okay? So that equipment will come in, they'll validate it against this, that standard itself, and then they'll retest that 18 months later or 24 months later, right? Well, the issue with this is this equipment's been used dozens of times between the point when you had the initial validation and the revalidation that occurs, and there's uh, zero knowledge over when you would have had a failure event occur, right? So in this particular case, these are four units on our inventory, and if you use that static 18-day uh, uh, hold time as, as, a, as a threshold for uh, usability, so to speak, you know, two of those units would have failed at some point uh, during the, that usage cycle. So, the, so how do you deal with that, right? What we do is we actually go through and we recalibrate, requalify our equipment every time it comes back into the facility. And it gives us a, a great deal of traceability uh, in regards to equipment performance uh, so that we can pr much better predict how that equipment's gonna behave in the field and pull it out of service or refurbish it if it, if it, de if it falls below certain uh, performance criteria. So this just shows you one aspect, which is you know, hold time on a given shipper. We can do the same thing with car carrier performance, uh, you know, on-time delivery, you know, cost bases, and other things that tie back into the entire supply chain. All right, it has also led us to a num another uh, um, multiple other components that we have to consider from a, a equipment chain. So the second thing that we've, we're in the process of rolling out now is what we call our human use only fleet, and so human use only is a compliance element that has come out of uh, feedback from the end user, i.e. the clinical sites in large hospitals or clinics in which they are demanding proof that the equipment that is being used to move these therapies from one location to another have never been in, exposed to animal products, right, from a, from a sterility or contam contamination issue. And so they want certification that that unit itself has only ever held a human commodity. Well, since we have full traceability on the commodities and the usage cycle on every one of our pieces of equipment, we can provide that aspect for our client base. Um, and there are certain clinics in the U.S. in particular that will not accept equipment without this compliance uh, certif certification. We think this is something that's going to become more ubiquitous. And so our compliance ties into not only the ability to certify that, but it also ties into all of the process controls around ensuring that we have a piece of equipment that's compliant with that certification uh, being applied to any given order itself. Okay? All of this stuff is anchored again in our, in our platform, our informatics platform. So this is just an example of what that technology interface looks like. And so the technology interface not only tracks all of the uh, serialized components uh, and performance characteristics of the equipment and the carriers, but it also captures all of the data associated with the in-field utilization of those, that equipment. Uh, so we have comprehensive temperature and, and performance characteristics uh, for the commodity itself that is searchable and exportable uh, via EDI integration to multiple inter, inter electronic interfaces, whether it's a manufacturing software, whether it's a, you know, some sort of outcomes research or other things along those lines. So the second thing that we've, we've rolled out is we, we've now come up with a, the first true validated uh, cleaning process for logistics distributed equipment. Um, and so we've been working really hard on identifying a process by which to control and minimize the viral, bacterial, and sporicidal load on this equipment as it's out in the field. And um, we've worked with third-party laboratories to identify a defined process that is validatable and controllable. And uh, we've been, we're happy to say that we we've, we've, are now in the process of getting ready to roll this out and it provides a five log reduction in the viral load, sporicidal, bacterial uh, load on any surface within our equipment uh, chain itself. So that's a significant improvement over, over historical. Historical folks don't even, uh, they may wipe it down with, with alcohol and that's about it. So we think that this is a significant advantage uh, and, and benefit for the, for the market. So we've also been building out our infrastructure and uh, over the last year, we've rolled out two new physical facilities, uh, one in Livingston, New Jersey, 
as well as uh, one in, in Netherlands. These facilities themselves, if you go into each or, or any of these given facilities, the, the processes, procedures, equipment are identical. So everything operates under the same exact paradigm. So the SLP of pulling a piece and in, 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 in commissioning a piece of equipment in, in Amsterdam is the exact same as you would see in our California facility. Uh, that allows us to obviously validate the entire paradigm regardless of location. And so if you're supporting global trials or you're running trials in Europe, APAC, the US, uh, we, we have the ability to do that on the same uh, quality system, same SOP, same format. And we think that that's extremely important. A lot of uh, third party sites that are supporting equipment distribution, you know, if you go into their facility in, in New York, it'll, the processes for commissioning that equipment are very different than you would see in other locations. And we want to make sure that, that there's standardized platforms across the board uh, that are inherently scalable. And we've also built and put together a compliance ecosystem of partners. And the partners themselves uh, are, uh, there's, there's two really key components here. One is, you know, we're trying to identify partners that we feel are best in class, uh, partners that have the ability to integrate uh, from a data standpoint, from an infrastructure standpoint, from a partnership standpoint, um, uh, standardize you know, components, what we call our compliance unified ecosystem. Uh, so informatics integration on the data management aspects of, of what's going on in the space, but also on the regulatory standardization, standardized SOPs, standardized protocols, standardized engagements, handoffs, workflow, uh, to support all of the services that are associated with supporting this space. So it could be patient services, hub services, order to cash, it could be things that tie into, you know, kitting, fulfillment, labeling, obviously distribution, logistics, equipment management, uh, as well as consulting support, which tie into audit and consulting and manufacturing. And um, the partners that we're engaging with that we're building out at this point in time, all of these partners will have full informatics integration via an EDI format uh, so that we can push and pull data between them seamlessly which we think is ex extremely critical, but we'll also have unified or, or um, optimized platforms so that the services that we support will be complementary to the services that, that our partners support so there's not a lot of overlap. Minimize that, 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 that uh, basically that, that spend and optimize uh, the ability uh, on a platform basis for, for that data and that, or that process or that system or that package to be uh, supported uh, through that rest of that compliance network. And so this is something that we're rolling out and we're working on with our partners uh, and, and we believe that this will help from a standardization footprint and uh, an ease of use basis um, for, the, for the industry over the next uh, you know, couple of years. So to that end, just to, to summarize here, you know, Cryoport, as I mentioned, we are the market leader in the space. You know, we're supporting 35% of the overall global market uh, from a distribution standpoint, more than half of the U.S. And, and European markets themselves. You know, based on that experience, we're, we're really focused on driving standardization of processes and tools for the therapy space here. Um, we have developed the only compliance platform in the space, and so we're applying the same traceability and control standards that you would see in a manufacturing, CGMP manufacturing environment to uh, distribution and logistics. We're, we're trying to drive, uh, you know, market leading standards in, in cleaning and process management, uh, whether it, uh, it comes from a sterility standpoint, from, from a control standpoint, and from a clinical acceptance standpoint. Um, uniform equipment qualification, and management on a global basis, so we don't have to worry about different SOPs and protocols based on, on geographic location. And, and we're developing that partner network to really support, uh, you know, exportability throughout a, a defined best-in-class uh, ecosystem, uh, which ties in, you know, those players that we believe are going to provide the best uh, unified overall platform for, for the cell and gene uh, therapy space. Thanks.